Hello there! So, I think that it's been two weeks since I started organizing some assets on my drive and I decided that I had so many Kenny's assets that was not implemented on Godot yet so I always had to pass through the process of implementing them so I decided to make a project that would implement a lot of Kenny's assets in Godot in this video, I actually just want to report this process because I learned a lot during the process of making this implementation and organizing some assets. So, let's start with that. The first stuff that I implemented was the audio. There were, I think, that 370 plus files to implement there. So, I decided that I wouldn't make this <laughs> manually, so I created a script that would automate the process of taking some source files, so it would take some OGG files, and it would automatically create some stream player nodes, so if we go to the, let's say, the RPG sound effects, uh, it will automate the process of creating all these nodes here, and it will also automate the process of creating some audio stream random pitch, so if we go to the, let's say, RPG sound effects, all of these are basically just uh, audio stream random pitch resources. So if I want to create another sound effect, I can basically just go into audio stream player and drag and drop this there. And there we have it. So if I play this, I will get the sound effect. But what I wanted to do was to create this uh, audio sound effect library. And I also create this node here, which basically just take a sound effect, let's say if you want to play the chop effect here, this one. I can call this from another node, so I can basically just do this and play uh, chop. And what it will do is that it will take the sound effect and play it. So it will get the node and play this. So if I test the scene, yeah, we get this. But if I don't pass anything here, if I just call the chop or the play uh, method, it will randomly pick a child here and play it. So it's good for, uh, let's say we want to make a library of sound effects for uh, footsteps, so footsteps. And I can merge this from this RPG scene. So here we have the footsteps. And I will convert them to. Um, audio, yeah, I'll just play it to D. And I just need to drag and drop this sound effect library into this node. It will automatically play one of these sounds every time I call this play function and since they also are audio stream random pitch they will always play with random pitches so good so this is good for uh, creating some libraries uh, let's say we want to group some sound effects together and we want to play any of the, the sounds that we have here. It's kind of like the, the audio library we had uh, in 2.1 because we don't have it anymore so it's kind of sad. So to the next process, uh, I created the tile sets and I also automate them because Kenny has a lot of tile sets so I created this tile set. Uh, this tool that helped me assign the proper textures to each tile set. So if I go to the grass scene, uh, I created a basic uh, kind of like a template, a template scene with uh, the collision shapes already set. And all that this tool does, it takes a directory which is contained in this uh, tile set library so I just have to drag and drop this to the scene and set a directory here so I can set let's say um, the sets candy and tiles brown so it will take all these textures and assign them to all the children of this node so kind of handle it for me because there was a lot of tiles to do 
And uh, what I also did was to create, uh, I think that I automated the process of creating this TRS files. It basically run through all these scenes. So this scene, it will go to this scene, this scene, and every scene that is inside these folders and create the TRS, so the, the tile sets. And if I want to make a prototype of a level now, I just need to basically just drag and drop whatever I want to use as a theme of the level. So let's say I want to make a cave. So I can basically just drag and drop this here. And let's say I want to create a desert. And let's say I want to create a nice level or just a grass. And I also implemented some mushroom tile sets from Kenny. So, pretty cool, right? Uh, I also implemented some characters, and this one was actually a little bit trickier because I had to took all the, the textures and rename them to fit a, a folder. So, uh, since I used Nautilus, which is my distro default file explorer, I can basically just select as many textures as I want and rename, rename them. So it's kind of a batch rename for files. So I can basically just set bath and choose a suffix for this. So I choose a prefix and a suffix. And after that, I just needed to run this tool that I made here. What is it? Oh, okay. So fortify. It will take all the textures that are in a given folder. So in this case, the enemies folder and we'll create folder for, for them using the prefix that I use, so the bat in this case. And then it would create this, these folders and move every file with this prefix to this folder and then update the, the file system. It will create the directory, move the files and then uh, update the file system. And then the, the inter interesting part is this scene file <laughs> tool that I created. It run through all the folders, creating some sprite frames and some scenes as well. So it will it would assign these sprite frames to a scene packet and save it to a given uh, path. So all of these, uh, apart from the the actual rename and the textures that I imported, all of the process of organizing and creating the frame. Uh, the sprite frame, so the animations was created uh, procedurally as well. All of this was created with these tools, so the, the process was kind of cool to, to make. So now I just, if I want to prototype an enemy, so I just want, I just need to drag and drop it. Let's see, uh, play. Yeah. So I can drag and drop a B here and make it play as well. And let's say I, I made this, but I want to make a cave level, right? So I can delete this, this node, um, go here to the tile set, and now I want to make a cave. Just to see how this goes, so I will delete this because it doesn't fit. It doesn't quite fit. And now in the characters, I want to to add the bat, so a uh, bat scene here, which will be here. So let's add some bats here. You just have to drag and drop stuff. Uh, talking about the, the characters, I also add the, the players, so if I want to drag and drop a player here. And let's add the... Well, and as you can see, there are a lot of, of animations, so I can basically just, I don't, uh, let's say, we want to tell the programmers that whenever the, the bat reach this character, it will be hurt, or we just want to make this walk here, start from here, so play animation, we, and all of this was automated as well. So uh, using these tools that I created, 
and let's see oh and the interface so let's see uh, I think that I will add this I also automate the interface and this one was the most time-consuming one I thought it would be pretty easy to do but it, it wasn't because uh, UI is kind of hard to automate because it needs a lot of tweaks and this kind of stuff so I created a tool that would take a given team one of these I also create a GD script that extends the team resource so every of these teams has a script attached to it which will allow me to set a main color and a font color so I use this main color to make the, the style boxes so I created this style box factory script here which will take a team and use its main color and font color to create some style boxes so it creates a lot of style boxes as you can see here even some where is it even some empty style boxes and uh, using of course this extension of the team class so every team here has a main color and a font color as you can see and after creating these style boxes I created this script and this one was very 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 tricky to do because it needs a lot of ad hoc solutions as you can see here a lot of exceptions and it's very specific to my project uh, structure currently so what it does is that it takes some it run through all these classes here so box container button checkbox it, it run through all of this searching for style boxes so it searches for style boxes here and it will take a style box and set it to this class so all of these was also automated in this script but uh, I don't know it, it took a lot of time to do so I don't know if the cost of doing this actually paid off this automation so the checkbox I think that uh, the check button also has these tiles so uh, as you can see the the check button is uh, every style of it is just empty uh, style boxes so I had to create this exception here and the label as well so it uses the empty style box as you can see it's a lot of, of exceptions here right but at least I learned a lot with that so now we just need to drag and drop teams into some stuff so we have the team here and let's say I want the green team and oh as you can see uh, some cool stuff that I did here with the team Fi is that when it takes the uh, I think that is the set color uh, in the shadow it I learned that we can use some methods with the color class that invert the color so I don't know if you can see on the screen but it has this shadow with the inverted main color of the team so this team is green and the shadow is purple I guess so <laughs> we have the blue and the orange shadow which is kind of cool in my opinion and we also have this so let me show this we can drag and drop this here as well and everything will be tinted as needed so uh, this was the last thing that I did and this was the last implementation and it will be available in the Godot asset library soon I also made an asset page on each IO for this so it is on the pay what you want model so you can get it for free or you can add some tip so you can help support this project I will put the link in the description and also all of this with the Fizex, with the AI, with everything that will handle the actual game logic will be available in my platform template as well. So I made a huge update soon implementing all of this with the, the Fizex and some uh, platform mechanics. If you want to buy my platform template, the link will be on the description as well. Go there and support this work because it took a lot of time to do. And of course that all of this was made possible thanks to the awesome patronage of my patrons. 
which, by the way, let's welcome Luis Valesquez and Rebecca Araujo, my newest patrons. Thank you so much for your support. If you want to support my work in general, just go to Patreon and support me there. There are a lot of cool perks and rewards you can get there. So that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching, keep developing, and until the next time.